minister a word to you, and the message I bring tonight, and I'm only going to scratch, I don't even know if I can scratch the surface of it, but I want to bring a message regarding the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. You know, when you use that term, uh, that leaves uh, a lot of area open to consider and think about. God's kingdom is here, church. Amen. God's kingdom is increasing by the moment and by the day as people are being added to the kingdom and we as God's people are believing God for great and mighty things. God is moving. I, I shared with the church, good to have Pastor Donna and some of the ladies from Thurmont here. I, you know, when they come up here, well, you, I ministered down there and then they come up here. I said, they're really a brute for punishment. But I, <laughs> what I find out is the one that just said amen, some of those are the ones that pick on me and give me the hardest time. But they're tough, they're tough birds. But they love the Lord and I appreciate them so much. But I, I shared this morning, last Sunday night, uh, Juan and I had the privilege of ministering in a church we'd never been before up near Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And I'll tell you, church, God manifested His presence there. We saw several miraculous healings during the service. One of the couples that came, Juan and I've known them for years, they're both up in their mid-80s, and uh, her husband, about 11 years ago, got uh, Lyme's disease, and now he's got neuropathy in his legs. He has trouble getting around. She came... Uh, her back is a disaster. She was scheduled for surgery tomorrow. I don't know if the surgery is going to go through. She came up for prayer last Sunday night, the power of God. I, I said it was like one lightning bolt after another as we prayed for her. Her knees would buckle. She'd start to fall back and then forward. And all of a sudden, she ended up, she came forward and ended up on the floor in front of me. What I didn't realize was she told me after the service, she said, for years, I've been asking the Lord to fill me with the Holy Spirit and give me my prayer language on her way down to the floor. Last Sunday night, God filled her with the Holy Spirit. She got up off that floor with no pain. We had another lady that come up her, her left ear, I think it was, was closed up. Just began to pray and almost instantly God opened that ear. A gentleman uh, who had surgeries. That, uh, we were in farming country. When you get out of the car up there, you knew you were in farming country. The aroma in the air told you that. But this gentleman was a farmer, and his knee is bone on bone. And he said, I'm in constant pain. And, and I said to him, sir, I'm going to anoint you with oil. Do you mind if I lay my hand on your knee? I'm telling you, I felt the knee pop. And, and when I was done praying, I said, how's your knee? He said, no pain, no pain. We just saw God move. Uh, Pastor Donna tell you, we had a testimony. Well, it was Tammy's husband, Gene, spoke this morning. He said, I had acid reflux and things for years. He said, I bottle after bottle of antacids. A few weeks ago, we had a prayer line down at church. He come through that prayer line. I remember because he barely got to us. He barely got there. The power of God hit him. He testified this morning. He hasn't taken any more antacids. God instantly healed him. Church, uh, I, I'm telling you, you've seen it here. Pastor Mike and you guys are seeing it here. Over the last several months, I have saw such an increase of the healing power of God, and I believe it's only going to continue. I, I believe the day is coming. Everybody that walks through those doors into this house with an infirmity is going to leave healed and whole and set free. And that's why I, I, I just felt so led. I want to talk about the kingdom of God. Many believe the kingdom of God is a far-off place where the Father, Son dwell, the in, in heaven, but the kingdom of God is far, far more than that. I wrote this down. When I say the kingdom of God, what comes to your mind? When you begin to contemplate what is the kingdom of God? What does the kingdom of God look like? Where is it? What if I told you that it's far more than a place? What if I told you that it was far more than just a kingdom in heaven? I'm going to make you think tonight. You know, a lot of times whoever's up here is the one that's doing all the contemplating, the speaking and energizing. But you're going to get involved with the service tonight, okay? I'm going to tell you ahead of time. I'm going to have you speak some things this evening. 
when it comes to the kingdom of God. I'm going to, by speaking those things, church, you're going to activate the kingdom of God in your life. You are going to experience the kingdom of God in your heart. You that are watching online tonight, God is not bound by distance. The God that we feel in this sanctuary is going to touch you in your home or wherever you are tonight. And you're going to experience, I'm going to call it an upgrade in your walk with the Lord. Luke 12, 32, it says, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And what happens so many times, church, with with us as individuals, when we put the kingdom of God solely in a heavenly place, and what we do is we look forward to seeing and experiencing the kingdom of God after we leave this place, after we draw our last breath. Uh, we've relegated the kingdom of God to a heavenly realm. But you know when Jesus came, He said to those that were with Him when He taught, He said, the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God, church, is here tonight. The kingdom of God is in the sanctuary. He's wherever you are. If you know Him, if He's the Lord of your life, the kingdom of God, and I'll, I'll read a scripture here in Luke 17, 21. The words of Jesus, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Say that with me. The kingdom of God is within me. The kingdom of God. I want you to grasp this. The kingdom of God is far more than a place. It's far more than a, a land that is ruled by a king. God's kingdom is all that He is. The kingdom of God is all that He is in Himself. And what is happening, and I'm going to give you some of the, uh, just scratching the surface of some of the char characteristics of the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God is all He is. All the attributes of who God is. We're just beginning to experience the kingdom of God. I believe that the more you press in, the more the kingdom of God begins to increase within you. As you believe God. As you trust in Him. As He manifests Himself. It's all that heaven represents. The kingdom of God is all that heaven represents. The attributes, the character of the Godhead. And when activated in our lives, it creates an atmosphere of spiritual health and wholeness and fullness. We've been, we use the term, we read scriptures about the fullness of God. The fullness of God is a, 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 a manifestation, it's an impartation that increases daily, I believe, for those that seek. Those that press in to the presence of God are experiencing an increase of the kingdom of God in your life. Uh, there's something going on right now. I just feel it in my spirit. I, I just feel like God is opening some eyes tonight, spiritual eyes, to begin to receive. But when we begin to grasp what the kingdom of God is and what it means to us as individuals, and then as a corporate body, as each one of us begin to step into a deeper realm and level of the kingdom of God, that's when increase comes. That's when the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit begins to explode in a body of people. Daniel 4, 3, it says, How great are His signs! How mighty His wonders! His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. The kingdom of God, church, doesn't come and go. As some people feel and think. I'm going to give you, if I can get through them tonight, I'm going to give you ten aspects of the kingdom of God. But probably one of the greatest scriptures I can give you is found in Romans 14, 17. It says, for the kingdom of God, uh, 
Paul was te- er, teaching here regarding the kingdom of God and about eating and drinking. And, and if you eat something that would offend a brother, he, he talked about those things. But what he began to say toward the end of that message was, he said, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that's what we've been partakers of. That's what's happening in our midst. That's what's increasing. I believe every time the body comes together, Pastor Donna, I tell you, we're seeing an increase of the kingdom of God at Morningstar Family Church in Thurmont. You're seeing it here at Jesus as Lord Ministries. I'm seeing it everywhere I've been going and ministering because the kingdom of God is in you and I, and wherever we go, the kingdom is. And there are hungry hearts out there that are seeking and searching for the kingdom of God, for God Himself. He is what the kingdom is. And we carry that wherever we go. And then as we minister, as we preach the Word of God or speak or teach, we're releasing the kingdom of God into the hearts of the hearers that are receiving. God is making us aware of the kingdom. Righteousness. What is righteousness? It's holy, obedient living. It's being obedient to the call that God has on our life. It's living an honorable life that is free from guilt and wrong. Oh, that we would see that tonight. Friend, He died so you and I do not have to carry the guilt of our past into our future. I've ministered to so many people over the years that have have not come to the place. They've been forgiven by God, but they haven't forgiven themselves. And they're still in bondage to unforgiveness, which I'll speak about shortly. But it's righteous living. It's being upright. Listen to me. The days of playing church are over. We're not going to be able to get by by just playing church anymore. You either got him or you don't got him. That don't sound like good English, does it? He's either alive and living and well in you, or he's not. God doesn't play those games with us. He's bringing us into a place of commitment, total commitment to his presence. Righteousness, peace. What is peace? It's tranquility. It's a state of being calm. When everything around you can be falling apart, but you've got the peace of God that sustains you in those difficult moments. That's part of what the kingdom of God is. We have the peace of God in our life. That's what's going to separate us. And that's what's going to draw people to you and I in the days and weeks and months that are yet ahead of us. When everything around you is turmoil, but yet you're walking in perfect peace. What did his word say? He will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is what? Stayed, fixed, focused on him. No matter what's happening in your life, we know who's holding our life in the palm of his hands. And what did he say? Nothing will pluck you out of the palm of my hand. God will keep you in perfect peace. When you belong to Him. When your life is hidden in Christ. It's a place of quietness. Free from disturbing thoughts or emotions. You know the Bible tells us in the last days many people's hearts have failed them for fear. God's love cast out fear. The love of God that He has for us. Perfect love. Casts out that spirit of fear. You know, for too long we've been focusing and worrying over what the devil is doing. And for every moment you worry about what what the devil is doing, you miss out on what God is doing and wanting to do in your life. Get your eyes off of what the devil is doing. You can be aware of it, but don't let that be your focus tonight. Focus on the kingdom of God and who he is in your life. Righteousness, peace, and I'm telling you we're getting ready for a wave of God's joy. I love it when the joy of the Lord comes to the house of God. I love it when people that were weeping and mourning and weighed under a burden and a load of care finally get free of it and the joy of the Lord comes into their life. 
You know, it's, it, it's okay, church, listen to me. It's okay to get happy. It's okay to fall on the floor and laugh till you can't laugh no more and roll on the floor. You know, if they want to call us holy rollers, so be it. I'll be a holy roller for Jesus. I'll jump. A, if God says swing from the chandelier, Pastor Mike, you better get them reinforced. We might just do a little of that. When the joy of the Lord comes, the supernatural power of God comes into our life. And friend, you may do things that one day you felt uncomfortable doing, but when the joy of the Lord comes, you lose that, that, that who cares thing. Who cares what somebody may think about me? This is about Him and His presence in my life. The presence of God, joy in the Holy Spirit, an attitude of praise and thankfulness. How long is, when's the last time you really took time to praise God outside the walls of the church? We have praise and worship services. I love them. You know, so many times uh, the, those services, those times of worshiping God set the tone for the preaching of the Word of God. There's times I wonder if they're going to preach my message while they're singing. That's okay. That's God confirming His Word. But do you praise God on Monday and Tuesday? Do you thank God every morning when you open your eyes and you're drawing your breath and you get another day to live to share the goodness of God in our lives? That's what joy is. That's what joy is. Well-being, delight, pleasures of the heart, the kingdom of God. Characteristics of the kingdom of God. Number one, the kingdom of God is life. It's not just natural life. It's what we call Zoe life. Z-O-E. Zoe life. God life. When you got saved, you, you give up the old life and a new life came. God transformed you. The thief comes not, John said in 10.10 here. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it how? More abundantly. More abundantly. Zoe life, God's life, not just natural, physical life, but supernatural, eternal life. When you got saved, you got eternal life. That's one of the benefits of the kingdom of God. You know, even though I'm living in the natural right now, I'm, I'm living in eternity with the Lord. That when I draw my last breath here, my life continues. It doesn't end. We have eternal life. We'll live forever and ever with the Lord, but I'm living for the Lord here. You're living for God here. The kingdom of God is about new life, abundant life, eternal life. That's the message of the church. That's a message of the gospel. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting eternal life. That's the benefit of being part of the kingdom of God. That's part of the kingdom. This is what the Great Commission is all about that you and I have been called upon to fulfill in this hour. It's not about having good services and getting all energetic. It's about being imparted into to carry the gospel, what it says in, in, in Mark, to go into all the world and preach the gospel, to share what God has done in your life with someone else that needs to be born again. We are called to disciple folks so that they can experience and grow in the knowledge of God and in the goodness of God. Say with me, Zoe life. Say, Lord, I want that Zoe life tonight. Point number two, the kingdom of God is lordship. The lordship of Jesus Christ is the foundation of the kingdom of God. I want to say this to you. He's not king and Lord. He's not just King and Lord. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is no other King. There is no other Lord but Him who is a living God tonight who loves you. We have a world here for years, generation upon generation, countries appoint people to be King. And He only reigned for a season. But my King reigns forever. And He will reign forever, church. He's an eternal God. He's an eternal King tonight. Jesus Christ is not just King, but He is the King. 
Say this with me. He's my king. He's my king. I, there was a, a thing that a gentleman put out years ago. I remember hearing it many times. And it was t- entitled, He's My King. If you, you can pull it up sometime. Don't, don't get your phone out now pull it up. But you can pull it up on there. It's awesome to listen to how he describes who his king is. Friend, when we realize who he is and how much he loves you and I, we can't help but want him to be the Lord of our life. Philippians 2, 8 to 11, the writings of Paul, Paul said here, and being found in an appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name, every name tonight. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on the earth and those under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's truth in that. Listen to me. I don't care who it is. I don't care what their title is in this world. One day. One day, every one of those individuals is going to stand before the God of creation. And it says, and every knee on that day shall bow. And those that were staunch atheists on that day will have to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm not going to wait till I stand before Him, but I choose to bow today to the King of Kings and to His Lordship in my life. Revelation 17, 14. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them, for He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with Him are called chosen and faithful. Say that with me tonight. I'm chosen, and I'm faithful, and I'm going to be with Him on that day. On that day, we're going to be with Him, church. He's my Lord. He's my Lord. We used to sing that chorus. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's my Lord is he your Lord tonight I ask you this is Jesus Lord of your life is he Lord of your workplace is he Lord of your activities is he Lord that is in your future plans and dreams is he Lord in your business if you own a business is he Lord in your church And I believe I can say, yes, He is. He's Lord in this church. He's Lord in that church in Thurmont, Maryland. He is Lord tonight. Is He Lord of your desires and all that belongs to you? Is He Lord of your gifts and talents? There's a lot of talented people in the world, but a lot of their talents are not being used for the glory of God. Oh, I would that the Lord would touch them And a lot of these that are doing their performing would begin to use their talent to glorify God. He must be Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. I can remember shortly after I got saved, that was a statement that was being spoken. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. He's not a part-time God, church. He's not into part-time lordship. He is either Lord or he's not. I want him to be Lord of my life. Friend, we don't have too much hope for the future if we don't have Jesus. But if we got Jesus, I'm telling you, things are looking up really good. Things are looking really good right now because God's got great plans for us. Number three, the kingdom of God is forgiveness. It's part of the kingdom of God. Oh, if we only understood how powerful forgiveness is. Not only of forgiving, but being forgiven. Especially being forgiven. If you only knew what God forgave me of. If you only knew what God saved me from. And you know, the same grace that has been given to me, may we give it to others. May we be gracious as He has been gracious to us. 
He said in Ephesians 4.32, And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Matthew 6.14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But I think it goes on to say, but if you choose not to forgive, then you won't be forgiven either. You know, there's some righteous standards there that we need to take notice of. I was ministering to a gentleman this morning. It was so awesome. One of our nurses there brought one of her patients, an older gentleman there to church this morning, and he was talking about his upbringing and how hard it was, how harsh his family life was and stuff. And one of the things I've learned that God has quickened my spirit over the years, when I'm praying for someone for healing or deliverance and nothing is happening, usually the first thing God will quicken in my spirit is ask him that for holding unforgiveness. Unforgiveness can put a, a, a barrier around you that as much as God wants to bless you, he can't because of that. You've got to let go of it. And you know one of the hardest things to forgive? You know one of the hardest people to forgive? Ourselves ourselves God help us if God has forgiven you why are you holding on to it it's done what's he say I take those things and I ball them up in my hand and I cast them into the deepest sea never to be recalled again but why do we keep wanting to recall our past and what we were forgive yourself move on become everything that God wants you to be forgiveness Matthew 18 verses 21 and 22 then Peter came to him and said Lord how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said unto him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Take the limits off, church. You never know by forgiving someone and showing the love of God, you will win them into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God cannot be established without forgiveness. If, if, that, if there was any other way, Jesus died his death on the cross wouldn't have had to happen. But it was because of that death that redemption comes to you and I. That we can be forgiven. The common hindrance in a person's life to keeping the fire burning on the altar of their hearts is unforgiveness. I believe that's one of the greatest hindrances that holds people back. Oh, I encourage you tonight, whether you're here or watching tonight, if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, maybe somebody's hurt you and maybe that hurt's been really deep. Let go of it. And as you let go of it, God will heal that hurt. God will heal that wound. It's down deep in your heart tonight. If we say, Lord, Lord, without expressing true repentance and forgiveness, it is ineffective. It carries no proof. And we can't expect God to bless us and give us our heart's desires without it. Say with me, forgiveness. Forgiveness. Number four, the kingdom of God is Jesus' will in operation in our lives. Jesus' will. The kingdom of God and the will of God cannot be separated. The kingdom of God and the will of God. You know, He taught us to pray a prayer. Would you pray it with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thy kingdom come. You know what basically the Lord was teaching His disciples? That we can have a taste of heaven here on earth. We can bring the atmosphere of heaven into the earthly realm by learning to pray that prayer with sincerity of heart. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Lord, let thy will be done not only in my life, but through my life. The kingdom of God, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. What is his will on the earth? What is God's will for your life? Do you ever ask God that? God, what is your plan for me? For some of us, we better soon find out. We're getting close to the end of our journey. And I, I don't want to wait. You know, it would be a sad thing to figure that out a week before you died. 
I thank God I found out a whole lot sooner than that. And I'm, I, I'm living in God's will and purpose for my life right now. And I'm having, I'm telling you, church, I'm having the time of my life. I can't wait for the next day to, to, to dawn that I get to do the things of God. I get to do the work of God and the call of God in my life. The will of God is redemption and well, the well-being of humanity. The will of God is the gospel being preached and souls being saved. The will of God is the worship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as we come together as the bride of Christ. That's what the will of God is. Jesus spoke these words in Luke 4.18. It's also found in, in, in Isaiah when Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Listen to these words, church. This is the will of God. And I believe it wasn't only the Father's will for the Son, but it's the Father's will for us as sons and daughters of God too. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me. You're anointed tonight. Say, I'm anointed. Say it again till you feel it. I'm anointed. I'm anointed tonight of the Holy Spirit and fire that John the Baptist said the one coming after me will anoint you with the Holy Ghost and with fire you know I watched brother Mike and brother Ray turn the stoves off tonight said it was getting hot in here you know sometimes it's not natural heat that you're feeling it's the fire of God I've been in services where I felt I mean sweat broke out I felt like it was on fire but it wasn't natural Heat, it was the fire of God that's coming into the body of Christ to do His will, to accomplish His will, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Just say this with me. Father, Your will be done in my life. In my life it's a dangerous thing to say it's going to cost you everything but it's going to be worth it all friend what I've seen God do in the last couple weeks is only a foretaste of the greater things that God is about to do and all he's looking for is a vessel that he can work through are you a candidate tonight are you ready to be used of God? Friend, wherever you go, listen to me. This very scripture, I, I, I would encourage you to read it, study it, memorize it, and speak it over your life. Anytime you have a question, God, what is your will? Get this scripture out and just begin to quote it, and you'll know what the will of God is for your life. What God has done in my life, I can't keep it to myself. I can't keep quiet. i got to share it. <laughs> what was it Jeremiah said? It's just like a fire shut up in my bones. And I can't contain it anymore. I've got to pour it out. And that's what God wants to do in your life and in my life. He wants to flow through you. Out of your innermost being, the Bible says, shall flow rivers of living water. I believe there's fire in the river. I believe there's healing in the river. I believe there's deliverance in the river. I believe there's blessings unlimited, untold in the river of God's fire and presence in His anointing in your life. Number five, the kingdom of God is power. Say power. Say it a couple times. Say power. Lord, manifest that power right now. That when they say power, they feel the power. They feel a divine injection of the power of God. You're about to see the power of God come to Africa in May, Brother Pete, when you go. You thought your last trip was pretty good. You better watch. You better get ready. Buckle your belt. The power of God is being poured out. It's being poured out right now. The kingdom of God encompasses the power to save, to heal, to deliver, to change, to transform, and to see the supernatural become a natural thing in our life. The power is there. It is the power to defeat every enemy that would rise up against us. Church, we, ha we don't have to fear what the devil is doing in the earth. 
We've already been told what he's going to do. All we got to do is have the power of God activated in our life to counter what the enemy is doing. For everything the devil has, every tool in his toolbox, God's got an antidote for it. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says God will raise up a standard against him. What, what is that standard? And better yet, who is that standard? It's you and I. You and I, we've been deputized and we have received the authority and the power of heaven itself in us. And for everything the enemy desires to do, friend, we tolerate too much. We tolerate the enemy reaping, wreaking havoc in our families, in our finances, in our lives. When we, within us, I read it to you when I began tonight, the kingdom of God is in you. The authority of the kingdom of God is living in you and I tonight. Why are we not using it? Why are we not activating it? Why are we letting the enemy use this as his doormat to wipe his feet on? It's time, church, listen to me, that we make him the doormat that we put our feet on and put him under our feet and defeat the enemy. He was defeated over 2,000 years ago on a cross in a tomb where the stone was rolled back and Jesus come forth. He come back. He, the Bible says he took back the authority from the devil then, of the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And now he gives those keys to you and I and we carry those keys. Use them. Unlock those things that have been locked up in your life. 1 Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. It's not just in word, but it's in power. It's one thing to speak something. It's another thing to see that that is spoken, manifested in your life. We can talk all we want to talk, but it's time to see the manifestation of those things that we're preaching and talking about. It's time we see them in the church. We can't expect revival to come to the community if it doesn't come to the church. And it's going to come to the church through individuals like you and I that have had enough of life as we know it and say, I'm ready for that Zoe life. I'm ready for the manifestation of God's Spirit and His Lordship to be real in my life. That I can live it every day. I got to hurry here. I'm only going to get part way. The power of God is given to us to forgive, to love, to deliver, and to bring forth the good news of the gospel, and to combat and defeat all the enemies, and to overcome all the challenges of life. Say this with me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He didn't say some things, He said, I can do. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. When he said all, A-L-L, -L, that means A-L-L, -L, all, nothing held back or reserved, all things. Acts 1.8, the promise was given, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses of me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 2, 1 to 4, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly say suddenly I'm ready for a suddenly I don't know about you <laughs> Lord send us suddenly right now send us suddenly right now mm. do it Lord quicken us and suddenly there came a sound are you listening tonight from heaven heaven touching earth you know, there's a, there's a line between heaven and earth right now. It's not up there and we're down here and there's nothing between. I believe it's that, that thing that Jacob saw, that ladder, where angels ascending and descending. You'll hear more about that. I don't want to get into that. It's another sermon for another time. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. It's a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues of fire that one set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Friend, that wasn't just a one-time thing. That was an activation of the move of the Holy Spirit. It's still active. That promise is still there for you and I. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire and preach the Word of God with authority and with power. 
I, I get sick and tired of when I hear people saying, when the apostles died, everything, the speaking in tongues, the gifts of the Spirit, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers died with them. No, it didn't. It was given to the church. The church didn't die when the apostles died. The church is even now being alive and activated in new levels. And you and I have been given that same power and authority tonight. Let's begin to walk in it and operate in it. Power. What kind of power? Mark 16, 15, or 17, I'll see. And these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. How many of you have done that? If you haven't, get ready, you're going to do it. Now, I'm scaring you tonight. Some of you think, I don't want to do that. Where's the day in my life? I didn't want to do it either, but somebody has to do it. But what I found out is it isn't that difficult to do. You have authority to do it. We get fearful of failure. God has given us authority over all the works of the enemy. That's what it says in the Bible. In Luke 9, 1. He gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure all diseases. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. That don't mean you go out here looking for a rattlesnake and pick it up. That's tempting God. And thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. To me, excuse me, but to, to me that's foolishness. It really is. But if you would accidentally, like Paul did when he picked up the pile of wood, there was a serpent in the pile. He took up a serpent and didn't know it. It bit him, but it didn't have any effect on him. He didn't do it knowing the snake was in there. How many of you would pick up a pile of wood if you knew a snake was in that pile? I don't think so. Not unless you had a few uh, french fries missing <laughs> in your life. Well, we used to say a few fries short of a happy meal. But it's not, we don't, we don't do the things on purpose. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's what I've been seeing. I'm telling you, in the last couple months, we've been seeing uh, people being healed and set free. You know, the very thing the enemy meant to put the church in bondage, it's the very thing that God has given us authority over COVID or whatever it is. We need to take authority over it. Number six, the kingdom of God is love. I think there's another key. The kingdom of God is established upon love. I quoted it to you when we started tonight, John 3, 16. For God so loved. Everything God's done is based on love. A love for His church. A love for His creation. A love for His people. 1 John 4, 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And His love has been perfected in us. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And there abideth now faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these three is love. The love of God. Number seven, the kingdom of God is unity. There is unity in God's kingdom for there's only one king. There isn't a debate going on up in heaven on who's in charge. He's large and in charge. I'll say it till Jesus comes. That's my statement. He is large and in charge. He hasn't given up authority tonight. Paul urged the believers to keep the unity of the faith. One of the things that's going to empower the church these last days is when the church begins to walk in unity. Not just in this house, but in the church houses. When pastors and churches begin to come together as one in Christ. You don't create unity, but you keep it. Unity has been given by God. It's God's heart and desire. You don't create unity, you keep it. When unity begins, we begin to, to foster that spirit in the church. God desires to bring unity in the body of Christ. John 17, I, I would encourage you to read the whole chapter of John 17. It was a prayer that Jesus prayed for himself and then he prayed for his people. Verse 11, now I am no longer in the world, but these are that are in the world. And I am come to you, Holy Father. Keep your, through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Down in verse 20 of that chapter, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Unity tonight in the body of Christ. One more and I'm going to quit tonight. The kingdom of God is light. Then Jesus spoke to them, John 8, 12, saying to them, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of the life. 
of God. 1 John 5, 1, or 1, 5 to 7, it says, This message which we have heard from Him and declare to you that God is light and in Him there is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Church, you are the light of the world tonight. The kingdom of God. I've only scratched the surface. I could go on. I could go on for another hour and still only touch on a little bit of it. But the kingdom of God is here. He's in you and I tonight. I wonder how many of us are ready to walk in that kingdom realm of what God is. How many, how many of you tonight are ready for God to increase as you decrease in your heart and life? God is raising you up in this hour. God is raising up a triumphant, glorious church that one day He's going to send His Son back for. Jesus is coming for a spotless bride, for a glorious bride. And I want to be part of that number when He comes. I want to be part of that wedding party in heaven where we celebrate Jesus, where we're married to the Son of God for all eternity. Would you pray with me? Father, thank You tonight. Father, I pray for those out there watching online as well as these in the sanctuary tonight. Father God, help us to grasp, to get a, a greater understanding of Your kingdom and how great and how massive, how complete it is. And God, we're being brought in to wholeness. We're being brought in to completeness tonight in You, Father God. Father, I pray for a fresh impartation, Father God, a fresh awakening of wisdom, of revelation. Father, right now, I release a spirit of revelation upon each one of these that are uh, hearing this word being spoken, whether in the flesh here in the auditorium or online, that God, that they would have and feel the presence of God invading their life. That God, it's rooting out those things that have become a hindrance. And in that place of those things is coming love and power and unity in their life. In that place comes authority and, and, a, 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 a new ID, a new identity that I am no longer the man or the woman that I used to be, whoever you're speaking to. Lord, I, I know who I am tonight. I know that, Lord, there's so much confusion in our world about whether we're male or female. God, I don't have that confusion tonight. I don't believe any of us here do. But God, we know what we are. But more than that, God, we know who we are in you tonight, Father. And I pray that you would touch lives tonight. Lord, we've had enough. We've had enough of just life as usual. God, we say to you tonight, God, I'm ready to step in to the supernatural. I'm ready to step in and live kingdom life. Kingdom life in Jesus Christ. Would you stand with me tonight?